can say your name and what years you played here at North Carolina Central. My name is Patrick Cole Brinson Jr. John Guerra. I'm Rashawn Davis. And I played basketball at Central from 2016 to 2019. 14, 15, 15, 16, and then I ended up 16, 17. 2016, 17, and 2018, 19 year. Lavelle Moten, uh, 1992 to 1996. I uh, became a head coach at North Carolina Central in March In 2012, North Carolina Central University had been established as a member of the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference for two years at the Division I level. After rejoining the conference, it helped found following a transition from the Division II level. Entering the 2012-13 season, the Eagles had gone 20-12 in league games and then shocked the conference by going 15-1 to claim the number two seed in the 2013 MEAC tournament. The Eagles were stopped short in the quarterfinal round, but little did they know how close they were to opening the door to continued success. It's been a really special run for this Eagle club over these last few years. I want to start back in the 2013-2014 season. You have uh, Pooby Chapman and Jeremy Ingram on that team together. Going into that year, did you sense there was something special about that team? You know, that, that year was, was memorable um, because the previous year we had lost in the um, first round of the MEAC tournament. And I just remember the, the pain and the humiliation that was associated with it. And then on top of that, to add um, harm to, to the situation, we had our reigning player of the year for the following year come in in June and say he's going to transfer. So that kind of broke the spirits of people um, that was surrounding the program and surrounding the team because we were all had the next year mentality. I thought when he transferred, I thought what happened, it really bonded the group. So that summer, uh, KJ Javar just really stepped up. Um, he said, listen, I'm going to fill this vacancy and um, I'm going to make sure this team can rally around me and I'm going to provide the appropriate leadership that's required for us to be successful. And I knew it was special from preseason, the way they held each other accountable, the way they policed one another, the leadership. And I always thought, you know, it's human nature for experience is always the best teacher. You know, it's one thing as a coach to be talking and telling them what's about to happen if you do this and what's going to happen if you don't do this. But, you know, once you go through it and you kind of taste your own blood a little bit, it awakens you. During that 2013-14 season, you had one of the most defining moments of the program history so far when you beat NC State at PNC Arena. What do you remember about that game? The summer when we scheduled it, Poopy Chapman walked in my office and said, oh, we got NC State? Yeah, I'm def we definitely win in that game. And, you know, a lot of times kids say things, but they don't sound convicted in their beliefs. He sounded convicted. He was hurt and he was... He was upset, man. Those guys just walked around with a chip on their shoulder all year. So I remember going into uh, PNC, um, and I just thought if we played well, I told him before we left, I said, listen, if we do what we're supposed to do, we're going to win this basketball game. We led from start to finish, and I remember them hitting a three-pointer to tie it up in, at the end of overtime. I mean, at the end of regulation. And you, it's human nature to, just for your mind to go back 
to a place. I think the previous year we had lost to Oklahoma the same way. You know, they, they hit a three-pointer to tie it up, and I'm like, wow, here we go again. Like, yo, this can't be happening again. And KJ looked me dead in my face in overtime and said, Coach, don't worry. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, we're going to win this game. And just seeing that in his eyes, you know, it, it, it lifted my spirits. And uh, I think we outscored him 12 to 2 in overtime. And, you know, it was a monumental win for, you know, the program and just the community at large. And I think it was the victory that really put North Carolina Central on the map. Credit to them. Obviously, it's a huge win for. North Carolina Central University, um, every low major program, every HBCU, um, you know, hopefully they can look at this and feel inspired. The Eagles once again posted a 15-1 and mark in conference play in 2013-14, but after feeling the sting from last year, vowed not to feel the same way again. The Eagles stormed through the quarterfinal and semifinal by defeating Howard by 46 points, 92-46, and followed that with a 23-point win over local favorite Norfolk State. Eagles continue to roll that year. Uh, you win the regular season, and you go into the MEAC tournament as overwhelming favorites. What do you tell the team as you got ready for, as you always talk about, those five days in March? One game at a time. Um, let's make sure we prepare. Let's make sure we stay together. Uh, let's make sure we overcome adversity, and let's make sure we get to the next play, regardless of what happened, whether it's right, wrong, or indifferent. Let's make sure we get to the next play. We had an intense focus, man. I remember, I think we came out that first night. I think we beat Howard by close to 50 points. And I, each time they called the timeout, the guys in our huddle was pretty much saying, um, you know, let's take this to another level. And I think that actually began um, earlier in that regular season where we played a and here and um, they had beat us in the MEAC tournament and our guys, it didn't sit well with our guys. I remember us being up 28 points and Pooby Chapman coming back to the bench saying, that ain't enough. We got to, it got to be 50 with them. Remember what they did last year, like it's 50. So we're up 40 something points with three minutes left and our guys are like, look, they better not score. You know, they wanted to send a message, and that was the maturation process of uh, that basketball team, and it just really carried over into the MEAC tournament. thankful for your leadership and the kind of heart you have and the way you have this team focused on integrity and truth and service. What you do on that court is extraordinary. You represent North Carolina Central University in a way that only others can imagine. And all I have to say is thank you. Thank you. So you win the tournament championship that year against Morgan State, um, the first one here at North Carolina Central, and you get your first NCAA tournament appearance. Um, how did it feel, as uh, you know, coming here as a coach to be able to get that first Division One championship? Man, it was it's really indescribable just being able to do that, and I think our fifth year of existence, or whenever it was, it was, man, it was monumental, man. Like it was. You know, it's really tough to put into words. Even years after the fact, it's, even to this day, it's really difficult to put into words. Those kids were really, really special. And I knew they were special at the time, but I didn't know how special they really were until years later. And I don't know if I, I hope and I wish and I pray, but I don't know if I can never get another team to um, click on all cylinders and be connected at the hip and, and love each other the way those guys loved each other. And that's my goal. That's my desire as a coach. But, you know, they were truly special. They were truly remarkable. And not only overcoming adversity, but 
you know, just reaching new heights and, you know, raising the bar for this basketball program. NCCU made its first Division I tournament appearance in San Antonio against Iowa State. Karamo Javara was able to give the Eagles a lead in the first half after a three-pointer, but the third-seeded Cyclones proved to be a tough test and defeated the Eagles 93-75 in their first trip to the Big Dance. Following the 2013-14 season, two of the Eagles' backcourt anchors graduated after their senior years. NCCU's all-time assist leader Emmanuel Chapman and the 2013-14 MEAC Player of the Year Jeremy Ingram. NCCU retained frontcourt players Caramo Javara and Jordan Parks, but stepping into the guard roles for the first time as Eagles were Nimrod Hilliard and Anthony McDonald. After two consecutive seasons of going 15-1 in conference play, the Eagles raised the bar by going 16-0, making that squad the first team in school history to go undefeated in league play in men's basketball. They were really special in their own right, man, because they just kind of refused to lose. Uh, it was the leadership of uh, KJ and Jordan Parks. They just led those guys, unlike any other. And I remember, early, it's always that defining moment in the year where you say, okay, this is going to be really, really good or really, really bad. And we had lost to Memphis, and we didn't play well, and I mean, it was just an awful game for us. And we had a team meeting the moment we got back, and... I'm the guy who was raised to say how you feel, get it out the way, and then move forward instead of bottling your emotions and keeping everything in. So we had a team meeting the moment we arrived back. And I allowed each player to go in front of his team and sit in front of his team and address each teammate um, openly and honestly and as candid as he possibly could. And when it got to KJ, I'll never forget, he, he went in on his teammates. And... It wasn't a disrespectful going in on him. It was, you hurry, better hurry up and get your act together, man, because this is my senior year and I ain't going out like that because of you. And if you want to fight, we'll fight. If you got something to say, we'll handle it. However we going to do it, we're going to handle it right now. But tomorrow you're going to be a better man and a better teammate. And, man, it was like Ray Lewis. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like he just raised the level. Um, of, of competitiveness of, of each individual. And I'm super proud of that young man because again, I was, my leaders were Pooby Chapman the year before and then KJ and now you realize you, th those guys don't come along every day. So coach, during that run, of course, all the consecutive MEAC wins and you have the second longest home court winning streak in the nation. How did it feel when you, over those three years, you had those guys go out there and you just had a feeling that, you know, we're going to win this game at home? Yeah, everything was electric then, man. I, I think, you know, those guys were so well liked amongst, you know, their peers and contemporaries across the campus that the student support was you know, beyond imaginable because they liked those guys. Um, they were just great guys on campus. I think over a three year span, we were 48 and two at one time. And I think the two losses were by like one point a piece. So there was a, a scenario where we could have very well been 48 and no. And when you do that, it's not, it's, it has nothing to do with me. It's just great basketball players, man. Like those guys just refused to lose and they got at it so hard in practice that game time, they really made it easier and they bought into everything that, um, you know, I was trying to present to them. And they had a taste of the NCAA tournament and they wanted to go back. You know, once you, <laughs> once you taste a piece of cake, like it's like, okay, this is, this sugar high, I, I, I need to go get that back. Um, and so everything that they did on a day-to-day -day basis was just to chase that sugar high again. actually believe that and come out and play to the best of our abilities and everything else will work itself out. Let's go have fun, y'all. Let's go have fun, y'all. Young boys on three. One, two, three. Young boys. Hey, go back.
things I've accomplished, I never look at the numbers. I really don't read articles, but when people throw little nuggets at me, 30, the number one in the nation in conference wins. You know, that's, think about that for a second. What these kids have accomplished have been tremendous. 35 conference wins. They have the number two winning home streak in the nation. 2015 MEAC tournament, first round, blow out Coppin State, and you run into the Delaware State team again that you played very close on national television, and they get the better of you in the conference tournament. Um, how did you talk to the team after that game and prepare them for their first NIT appearance? You know, it was disappointing to say the least. It was so, so much pressure um, on us to win because we had completed the season 16-0 um, and 0 in regular season. And I think over time we had won 20, 20 consecutive games and uh, we had really beat Coppin really good in the, the night before. And then the Delaware State game, we got in foul trouble. And I didn't, it's one of the games I regret as a coach. I didn't do my best. Those kids did everything they supposed to do. I, I just didn't, my substitution and my rotations were, weren't good. And uh, I told them that after the game, and I take the blame of that. We didn't play our best basketball, but I didn't do my best as a coach to help them. So it really wasn't their fault. And God rest her soul, I remember Deborah Saunders, white chancellor. She met me in the, um, the tunnel as we were walking. And she said, y'all have nothing to be ashamed of. Get those guys' heads up and let's go to the NIT and um, you know, walk out of here with pride. And that oftentimes in those moments is, is nothing anyone can say um, to appeal and, and lift your spirits. But what she said at that particular moment really lifted our spirits. And um, you know, we realized we came up short and uh, it was going to have to go back to the drawing board, but we were still awarded the opportunity to go to the NIT. In the Eagles' second consecutive postseason appearance at the Division I level, once again they gave their opponent all they could handle at Miami. Jordan Parks powered the Eagles with a game-high 25 points with seven rebounds, and the Eagles were able to draw within two with under a minute to go after a clutch layup by Karamo Javara but the Hurricanes were able to weather the storm and come away with a 75-71 win in the opening round of the NIT. You come here, 2015-16, you start playing and things don't go as planned. Um, what was that season like in your eyes? It's tough because it was kind of like a fill out year, trying to me get adjusted to his program and his ways and his system and how things are done. He wants things done to a down to a science. I mean, he wants it done the right way because he feels like, you know, if you give good energy, good things happen. Bad energy, bad things happen. So he wants everything to be done the right way because he feel like the right way always get rewarded. And, you know, I really wasn't used to doing things always the right way. Sometimes I have bad practice habits, you know, not showing up 30 minutes early to get stretched, get ready to go to work, you know, strolling in five minutes maybe before practice going through the motions in practice because I don't want to hurt myself for the game, not really giving much effort in practice, just playing games. Those were the things that I did, you know, before coming here and, you know, before getting used to Lavelle, you know, and having a senior campaign that, you know, I had. You mentioned good things happening. There's a couple of defining moments that I can pick out from your career. One of them during that junior year at Savannah State, you had a 30-point game. What do you remember about that? Oh, uh, man, that's that's when, uh, when we were at Savannah, I had just talked to Lavelle about playing the one. <laughs> he had moved me from the wing to playing the one position. And uh, I mean, it's, it, playing the one wasn't really much, it wasn't nothing new to me. Um, you know, I've been playing one, two, three my whole high school career, eighth grade, because I've always been tall, but I can handle the basketball. So that wasn't nothing new to me. What was new to me was learning, again, his system from a different position. Um, I knew all the plays, I knew exactly what he wanted, but just learning, you know, the timing and, you know, how he wanted things done and how he wanted his plays ran, that was something new to me. So, but before the Savannah game, we talked kind of about it. You know, he was like, how you feel about playing the one? And I was like, like wherever you need me, I'll play. I, you, you, he, I was like, I told him, like, you know how I am. Two consecutive postseason appearances for North Carolina Central. 2015-16 se season rolls along, and it doesn't go quite as planned. What made that season so difficult in your eyes? It was me. Um... I didn't do a good job of managing the roster. Um, I didn't do a good job of evaluating the character um, of the recruits that we bought in. They were talented enough, but 
it that season let me know that I'm not that good of a coach to coach character that's not there or instill some character that's not there. Um, so it made me realize that you can just get a, a average basketball player with great character before you take a great basketball player with low character. That whole season was my fault. I put that team together. Um, I didn't do a good job managing the roster. I lost a couple of coaches during the transition. And that's always difficult. You know, when you win, that's going to happen. They're going to, uh, you know, peel from the, 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 the fruits of that tree and, and, and take some of those branches off. And I was left here, you know, kind of solo to finish the recruiting and finalize it. And I didn't get to know the recruits um, as best I possibly could have. So the following year, you know, I thought that's what happened. And I just thought um, there's no one to blame for that but me. On the next episode of Family. My mindset going into my senior year really was there's no, there's nothing after this. One of the quotes we always talk about is how adversity introduces a man to himself. Once he pushed himself and he became great, our team became greater.